Okay, well, let's get started. Thank you, everybody, for joining us today um, for our webinar series that we have started uh, end of March. Today, we're gonna, gonna we're gonna talk about blockchain use cases. Uh, my name is Gloria Bailati, and I'm in charge of marketing at IOB Labs. Uh, and also with me today, talking about use cases, is Maximiliano Del Ojo that works in the adoption group. Uh, right now, he's focusing and, and leading all the DeFi strategy at the company, but uh, he's been involved in the past with, with several of these use cases that we are going to talk. So we are going to do this together. Um, what I want to, to start by telling you is uh, today's webinar is not to get in, in depth in, in, in each one of the solutions, it's to give you uh, overall uh, view about blockchain use cases that are built on top of our platforms, RSK and Riff. We have been doing uh, webinars that are specific to use cases. Like recently, we did Gasnor for the gas industry. Uh, it was done in Spanish, so we are uh, going to coordinate for an English version to be available. Uh, tomorrow we have, uh, and you're all invited, we're going to have a webinar about the Argentina Central Bank use case. It is again in Spanish, uh, sorry about that uh, for the English audience, but we will be repeating it uh, soon in English. Um, likewise, uh, we have been um, uh, co-hosting with Money on Chain that Max is going to talk about uh, several in-depth webinars. Uh, to talk more about their solution. And we will continue to do so, uh, like with Dexfreight, that is going to go live with the mainnet in June. We're already talking with them to do a specific webinar. Um, there was a webinar about one of the cases, a government, Marco Pass, that was done last week uh, that we're going to be sharing with the community. Uh, so basically, I just wanted to give you the framework that the idea today is not to get into in depth, in, in detail in each one of them, but just give you an overall feeling and view about what is happening with uh, blockchain adoption and use cases uh, on top of RSK and RIF. The industries we are gonna uh, touch base upon are uh, charity, logistics, entertainment, finance, government, and also we have a very interesting case that we want to share in the food industry. And the way in which we uh, developed this presentation, uh, which thought it was the most conducive, is for each one of the use cases, these are the questions we are gonna be answering. What is the solution? What is the target audience? What is the pro problem being solved? And why this matters? So with that, I'm going to start with charity. Charity, we have three cases uh, that are built uh, on top of uh, our platforms, BitGive, uh, Circle of Angels, and Blockchain for Humanity. Um, the charity uh, is, is a very, uh, we wanted to start by this, by the way, because of the time we are living through with, with the current, current pandemic. Uh, charity is always being important, but uh, more so these days, uh, where we are all, uh, you know, facing a lot of challenges, and more than ever, uh, we need to be able, you know, be willing to give and, and help uh, our neighbors, our countries, our cities, and and the world and humanity uh, in this entirety. Um, actually, it's nice to tell you that we have been involved in, in several COVID-19 related uh, initiatives. Uh, I'm not going to talk today about the bid 19 which is one in which we are participating uh, with the bid, uh, but we will be probably establishing, uh, putting together a webinar to talk about that uh, soon. It's being announced as we speak. Uh, they are still doing a lot of work on that. Uh, but we are having today a call with BitGive and talking about Corona uh, initiatives. And in the charity section, one of the things we're going to do is Agustin Pandolfini is the leader for social impact uh, use cases. And we're going to be coordinating a webinar 
uh, with Connie Gillespie, which is the owner and the, and the founder of BitGive, and Grace Torrelas, which is the founder of Blockchain for Humanity, that also has been doing a lot of uh, activity in webinars. Uh, were to have a more in-depth discussion about um, blockchain use in the charity industry. Um, the, the challenges that the, the charity, uh, the, the charity, uh, sorry, the, the charity sector um, segment uh, faces has a lot to do with uh, lack of transparency, which is one of the major obstacles for people to really wanting um, to donate because they are not sure whether the funds end up where they are, you know, supposed to be. This is something that we are going to be uh, seeing that is the common through these three cases. And in these three cases and some others, not all of them that we're going to discuss today, I am going to be sharing with you a little video uh, that uh, these uh, organizations put together that are probably going to do a, a better job than just me talking about them. But first, uh, before getting into the first video, which is about BitGive, um, it's a donation platform to provide transparency, accountability to donors, which, as I was mentioning, is one of the main obstacles that the, the charity organizations and NGOs are facing. Uh, well, the target audience is NGOs and donors. Um, and, and the problem they are trying to solve is uh, basically they provide transparency, but also uh, improve the cost because with the traditional method, methods, there was a lot of inefficiencies in the, in the system in terms of service fees, of money that could uh, you know, be wasted instead of getting to the projects uh, that really need the money. Um, why this matters? Of course, if we improve cost, speed, security, we're gonna get more funds to get the costs faster and we're gonna be able to enable more impact on the ground. So with that, um, I'm gonna share right now uh, Connie's video. Charities do some of the most important and life-saving work in our communities. Donors have become more interested in how their funds are spent and they want to see the results. Well, it hasn't been that easy in the past. You may have heard of money being stuck in bank accounts or even going into the hands of corrupt officials. But that's over now. With GiveTrack, we can assure that donations reach the people they ought to reach. GiveTrack is a platform that tracks donations and ties them directly to results on the ground. GiveTrack uses blockchain technology, which guarantees the safe transfer of funds across borders in just minutes. We track all donations on an open public ledger, which cannot be tampered with. GiveTrack has been developed by BitGive. We've been using digital currencies such as Bitcoin to fund projects in developing countries around the world. GiveTrack can help charities reach their goals without friction and fraud. You can now watch the flow of funds and project results in real time. Check out GiveTrack today. Well, uh, as I was saying, um, nothing better than the founder of uh, the, the, the organization to explain. Um, I, I find these videos be very educational because explain, uh, you know, very succinctly uh, what is that they are trying to solve. Another case in the charity industry is Blockchain for Humanity. Um, Blockchain for Humanity, um, it has a little bit different angle uh, than uh, BitGive does. Uh, they are a nonprofit decentralized accelerator to projects with potential to make a meaningful impact in society. So. Their target market, target market, sorry, is not NGOs and donors, it's social activists and donors. Uh, NGOs are normally, as you know, established organizations. Uh, Blockchain for Humanity more goes more for the individuals, the social activists that uh, are not belong to a, an NGO, but they still want to make an impact on the world. Um, and what they, what the problem they are trying to solve is to enable the social activists to get the funds they need through blockchain technology, because otherwise 
it's very hard for them to get in contact with uh, potential donors. And of course, in this case, transparency just like, you know, always is, but in particular in, in everything that has to do with charity and donations is of the most importance. So um, we're gonna watch now um, Blockchain for Humanity intro video so that they could explain in their own words what is they're aiming to do through blockchain. Blockchain is meant to change the world, transforming our lives and society. A new hope is born for all those who believe in a more fair and sustainable world. Emerging blockchain models arise with a clear determination to achieve a more equitable society. Sadly, these models are not the most attractive entry point for investors. Great efforts and ideas often go unnoticed because they lack the resources to prove their concept. Blockchain for Humanity is a not-for-profit, decentralized accelerator for those projects with the potential to make a meaningful impact in society. We give them the tools to advance as sustainable models and provide project teams with valuable insights and support from our network of pro bono advisors, sponsors, and partners. Funds received from donations are channeled to awarded projects by completion of milestones through a decentralized altruistic community created within the Giveth DAP. Join us as a mentor, advisor, sponsor, or donor, and together, let's build models that matter. Blockchain for Humanity. Blockchain meant for global impact. Sorry. Okay. Okay. Great from current slide. Okay. So the next case we have on the charity sector is Circle of Angels. Um, it's also a, a platform for donation, and the target audience is social enterprise. But uh, they have a particular focus on people Death that are working. is a blockchain-based logistics sorry. platform that enables sorry, shippers, sorry. carriers, brokers, and others. Sorry about that. Let me get back. Okay, so I was talking about Circle of Angels. Um, uh, they are, the target audience is a social enterprise, um, but they are focusing mostly on people that are working on the spaces of poverty, um, eradication, with a clear focus on education, climate action, tech for good, mm -hmm. and art. Funders, uh, angels or philanthropists. So they are trying to put together, again, just like we see on the other two cases, um, the you know, people that are trying, uh, social entrepreneurs and funders that are willing to fund their projects. And uh, again, we have the same situation, which is uh, the lack of, uh, the lack of uh, uh, transparency prevents many times for uh, funders or people, donors that are willing to give money to really uh, put the money on the table because they are not sure that it's, it's ending up where, it, where they want them to, to end and really making an impact. So again, now we are gonna um, watch a little video from Circle of Angels explaining their angle on how they are tackling charity and how they are using blockchain technology to do so. Today, over 800 million people are living under $2 a day. Institutional financing is hard to get, especially for women, and is still facing an issue of transparency in how the capital is invested. 
Circle of Angels is an impact network that ensures transparency and traceability of funds using blockchain technology and smart contracts. We connect impact funders with the need of social women entrepreneurs who are already making a change in their local communities. Through a simple and intuitive interface, social entrepreneurs will be able to upload their high impact projects. Once approved, they will be assigned an independent auditor known as Oracle. Anyone from around the world can become a funder and a sponsor of a project, donate to a special fund, or even open a fund and help distribute the aid. Using blockchain technology and smart contracts, each final beneficiary will receive the amount of tokens per milestone to prove that the funds were properly distributed. The entrepreneur has to exchange the tokens for money with the beneficiaries or by documentation with the auditors to unlock the next distribution. For total transparency, all capital flow information will be accessed from the platform, allowing the investors to visualize the route of money and the people directly impacted by it. Both funders and entrepreneurs will be able to track each impact milestone. We are a diverse, distributed, and committed team with one goal, reaching the world without poverty, starting by the impact on social entrepreneurs. See more at www.circleofangels.com. So, um, those are very uh, nice cases that are very uh, dear to us and close to our hearts because we are a, an organization with a purpose and we really want blockchain uh, to put our technology to the service of uh, making a better world. Um, and at this time, uh, you know, the, the charity, um, the donation spirit is very needed. So right there, not only you have three examples of blockchain technology at work uh, on the charity, NGO, social entrepreneurs, but also uh, places where if you are looking into uh, making an impact on the world by uh, donating uh, money to help these NGOs and social entrepreneurs. Uh, now we know uh, at least uh, three of them uh, that are total transparent uh, that you could make uh, a difference by donating today. Um, the second industry um, that we're gonna talk about is logistics. Uh, and there, um, I leave you with Maxi that is going to talk to you about about it. And we also have a little video. We don't have videos of all of them, uh, but in the cases we do, we decided uh, they are very good material that it helps, um, you know, for people to really understand what is uh, the solution uh, and what is that they're trying to do. So Maxi, if you go ahead. Thanks, Gloria. Uh, Duck Freight is a very interesting use case uh, about how blockchain is uh, getting into a, an off-chain business, you know. Uh, Duck Freight is a marketplace of shippers and logistic stakeholders. Um, they are deploying uh, escrow smart contracts, are, are different financial services on the top of of RSK and uh, the basic one is allowing payments on chain, you know, through stable coins. Um, that's the, the main idea uh, about Dex uh, they, they will, the, the idea is to make things, uh, uh, you know, to reduce in 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 inefficiencies or, uh, just to, to cut cost, uh, autom automati automatizing uh, some processes uh but uh, i think that one of the the the, the, the interesting thing, the interesting uh, things here is just to allow uh, all the stakeholders just to to pay on chain and once we have that we can build different financial services on the top of of tax rate you know just uh, imagine uh, insurance or 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 loans you know uh, uh so i think that this is this is a tip of the iceberg just uh, allowing um off-chain users to do on-chain on payments and after that just to build uh, different financial services for those users so and do, do you have video for that yes perfect okay so let's 
to the video. Thank you, Maxi. Dexfreight is a blockchain-based logistics platform that enables shippers, carriers, brokers, and other supply chain stakeholders to collaborate more efficiently, transparently, and securely. Dexfreight integrates blockchain, smart contracts, and AI with current technologies as well as legacy systems to offer a user-managed identity and performance-based reputation, digitized transactions, tokenized payments, capacity matching, and smarter finance and insurance solutions. The process is simple. Post the shipping details, negotiate and accept terms, track the process in real time, complete and receive payment, build a reputation and receive rewards for using the platform. This new level of automation will ultimately translate in shorter times and lower costs to get the products into the hands of the end consumer. Join us. Together, we will shape the future of global logistics. Thanks, Thanks Gloria. That, uh, it's a very interesting video because, you know, uh, it's a... It's a, a, a good way to do full trustability, you know, on a on a supply chain uh, from from the beginning just until uh, to the end. And the other thing is that uh, just when when we talk about lending on on blockchain, you know, commonly uh, you need to put uh, collateral, you know, to uh, to 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 borrow. And now with, with Dex Freight, uh, they are talking about just to build a reputation, you know. And, and in base of, of that reputation, just to, to be able to, to access to different financial services. So I think Deck Freight is going to launch, I think, in next month. Is that correct, Gloria? Or June? Yeah, they told me, well, they are, they are la launching the mainnet uh, by the end of uh, June. And, you know, by the time they are, you know, they will get ready to launch, we will uh, uh, coordinate a webinar with them. So that we could really deep dive, do a deep dive in uh, in the in this use case. Um, but yeah, a very interesting use case um, because really uh, is revolutionizing, uh, or it has the potential to revolutionize the logistic industry um, through blockchain. Perfect. And Perfect. You know, there, there, there's a couple of questions that are appearing in the chat. So let's continue asking questions to us. So it's a, it's the moment. And uh, okay, next one, uh, Lori. Oh. Yeah. So so because I'm not looking at the chat box right now. Um, so if you want, you know. No, yeah, I, 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 I'm replaying. Don't worry. Okay. Okay. The next uh, the next industry we want to talk about is the entertainment industry. Uh, and here we have two cases to share with you. Uh, there are two examples of blockchain uh, use cases on entertainment. Uh, one is crypto space shift, and the other one is what a fun. Uh, I have a video only for what a fun. Um, we're going to start with what a fun. Uh, basically, it's a solution that allows idols around the world to create uh, what they call the water cards that are trading cards that are collectibles, uh, that are scarce, are exclusive. Um, and make it available to their um, to their fans. So, what is the target audience? Is idols from all sectors, athletes, musicians, actors. What is the problem that what a fan is trying to solve? Is artists from all sectors are struggling continuously to protect their copyrights because there are people like using their images without their consent and they are not getting uh, the revenues that are related to the use of their image. So what a fun is one example of one idea to solve that problem uh, by crea creating this new kind of asset called uh, what a car. Um, and okay, the, why this matters is um, to bring uh, a global and open market where can, users can verify the authenticity of the cards, trade them in a transparent way, uh, including the content creator that uh, will be able to collect uh, the funds um, that are related to their image that today, you know, you know, um, 
you know, as I was mentioning, in many cases it's exploded, but they are not getting uh, the money related. So short video about what the fund uh, that explains better what, what it is. The Waterfan app allows you to manage the digital autographs of your favorite idols. Each autograph acquired through Waterfan has collector value for its scarcity and exclusivity. And they are backed by the security and transparency of blockchain technology. With Waterfan, you can receive autographs directly from your favorite idols. Know at all times the value of your portfolio and climb up the ranking ladder for incredible prizes. Negotiate with other users within our marketplace and get the most out of your trading skills. All information about your idols and their social networks is easily available. So you know it. If you value talent, what a fan. Um, moving on, uh, I don't have a video for this one. It's Crypto Spaceship. Um, it's a game. It's a strategy role-playing game uh, to build a powerful fleet to fight for the crypto space supremacy. The target audience is gamers. Uh, gamers, you all know, the gaming industry is a, I don't know, multi-billion or trillion industry worldwide, but it's being untapped by blockchain technology. There's only very few cases uh, about successful um, gaming. Uh, maybe CryptoKitties is the, the most best known. Um, but what's the opportunity here is really uh, getting games uh, built on top of blockchain to tap into this industry and provide entertainment through blockchain technologies. Um, this is just uh, so you could see, um, I have added, we have added, you know, their handles and Cesar.io. Cesar.io is a company that developed crypto spaceship. Uh, if you want to get into the game, to have an uh, experience um, about an example of a game uh, built on top of blockchain, uh, you have the URL, you have their handle. Um, so maybe you could have a little fun uh, while at it. Uh, next, we're going to talk about finance. And in finance, there are three projects we're going to talk about or we're going to cover. Money on Chain is one of them that you have heard a lot through the last uh, past couple of months uh, since they launched the first stablecoin on Bitcoin built on RSK and RIF. And um, we also, as I mentioned earlier, have done, they have done, and we have co-hosted with them several webinars. Uh, some of them are already available on our YouTube channel. Again, RSK Smart. Uh, on the DeFi playlist, you could find the ones that we have already uploaded. And we are going to be uploading uh, much more. Then we have Investoland and Da Vivienda. So, um, Maxi, um, if you want to very quickly uh, talk about Manion Chain, then we have a little video and then we move into Investorland. Yeah, of course. You know, uh, Manion Chain is the first stablecoin uh, backed uh, uh, with Bitcoin. You know, just to mint a USD dollar stablecoin, uh, you can do that with your Bitcoins. Um, why Bitcoiners want to do that, you know? Uh, it depends, you know, Money on Chain has three three tokens, the dollar on chain, that it's a stable coin, it's it's back to US dollar. And the, the good the interesting thing, thing here is that to mint a stable coin, uh, you don't you don't need to 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 over collateralize that, you know, just to mint one dollar in stable coin, you just send one dollar in BTC. It's very simple. Uh, it's different from the from the Ethereum, uh, you know, similar stablecoins such as MakerDAO, for example. Uh, and they have also two other tokens. One is one is uh, B Pro, uh, B, B Pro that it's a uh, it's for 
the audience for that token is Bitcoin, the long-term Bitcoiners, you know? Just uh, you, you put your Bitcoins uh, on that token and you get uh, a, a, an interest on that. And yeah. The, the, yeah. No, what I was going to say is that I think they, they get into explanation on, on the video. Um, okay, perfect. Okay. So maybe, uh, you know, it's just like, uh, for non, uh, for people that don't know anything about DeFi, uh, and uh, all of this is uh, very uh, uh, difficult to understand. Um, basically, what they are trying to do is to reduce the volatility in the crypto market uh, and provide new ways uh, for people that are Bitcoin holders uh, to earn uh, interest uh, on them uh, or uh, get loans or provide loans. Um, but uh, we are going to let uh, the video explain. It's a little bit longer than the other ones. Yeah. And we invite you to the YouTube channel, um, DeFi playlist, a lot of material already available there. And of course, you could always, uh, you know, if you have any project related to that, uh, Max's uh, email is uh, mdh at iobilabs.org. Uh, Fran, you could uh, share with the community. So why don't we go to the video that will uh, help explain a little bit uh, what is money on chain and, and why it matters. Bitcoin has revolutionized money by making it possible for us to do things that would once have been unthinkable. For the first time ever, a form of money became available whose supply was fixed and predictable. Bitcoin enabled fast and secure peer-to-peer -peer transactions that eliminated the need for a trusted third party. All over the world, traders, businesses, investors, and savers have started using Bitcoin. But there are countless more ways it could be used. Money on Chain harnesses this unrealized potential. The supply of Bitcoin is limited and the market is small, so prices fluctuate dramatically. This attracts speculative investors, which makes prices even more volatile and limits what Bitcoin can be used for. Our platform includes all of Bitcoin's core features, so it is counterparty risk-free and censorship resistant. There are plenty of stable coins on the market, but ours is unique. It's the only stable coin in the world that uses Bitcoin as collateral and is secured by Bitcoin miners. The stable coin we've designed is called the Dollar and Chain or DOC. The Bitcoin collateral behind it can be used in two ways. Bitcoin holders can buy BPRO tokens. Risk seekers and traders can make leveraged Bitcoin operations. The price of the Dollar and Chain is pegged to the US dollar. The dock is a way around the volatility of Bitcoin and can be used for trading or as a stablecoin for smart contract operations like loans and insurance deals. Our BPRO token makes the dollar and chain stable by absorbing its volatility and sharing it among other users who are interested in leveraged Bitcoin operations. Sharing the leverage gives BPRO holders a passive income traders and speculators will be able to make leveraged Bitcoin operations at a low cost. The whole system will be a decentralized autonomous organization governed by the holders of the money on chain token. The system will run on RSK, a network of smart contracts guaranteed by Bitcoin miners. Money on Chain was created for Bitcoiners by Bitcoiners because we know that there is no better guarantee than Bitcoin. Money on Chain, backed by Bitcoin, powered by RSK. Bit okay, moving on to the next um, use case uh, in the finance industry is Investolan. Um, Investolan is a platform that was created by Cesocio. Uh, Cesocio is the leading Latin America investment marketplace for small and medium investors. And basically through Investorland, what they are doing is crowdfunding a blockchain-based platform to enable entrepreneurs to raise funds they need and small investors to get exposed to new financial opportunities. 
So the target audience is individuals that would like to yield returns on their savings for one side and for the other side, projects or entrepreneurs that are looking for uh, new source, sources of funding. Uh, what is the problem they're trying to solve is to democratize the field of investment through blockchain technology. And why this matters is because projects need another funding source other than traditional financial institutions, because traditional financial institutions, to get to them for entrepreneurs uh, is very hard um, to, to do. And also uh, the regular uh, individual, the people, common people, many times don't have access uh, to opportunities for investments that big players do in order to uh, get uh, more out of their money and put their money to work. So uh, with that, we're going to hear from them what they are trying to do. 50% of the world's wealth is in the hands of 0.1% of the population. Why do you think this is? The best investment options, which cause this massive wealth, are always reserved for them. And you are not part of their circle. Should we continue to allow this exclusion? Think about yourself. Do you do well at your job and have some savings, but don't want to spend your money on a new cell phone again? What else could you do with it when the bank interest rates are ridiculously low? You can only keep consuming without generating wealth for you. Wouldn't you prefer to invest in Alice's real estate project in Manhattan? Maybe in Jose's logistic company? Or even in Horgino's startup? Minimum amount requirements, high banking costs, and bureaucracy make this impossible. Investoland arrived to solve this problem and elevate proud investments to its true potential, powered with its native currency, the Invacoin. Investoland is a global, decentralized investment network built on top of the Bitcoin blockchain, powered by RSK, that will allow for true democratization of investments. Investoland will allow for people to post a project or seek funds for an endeavor. And thanks to tokenization of assets rights, you will be allowed to easily invest and get returns without unnecessary middlemen. No bureaucracies and no delays, globally leaving behind the inefficient traditional models and allowing anyone to participate. Whenever you want, you will be able to sell these tokens to another investor on Sosocio's trading platform with its integrated continuous liquidity protocol. A social network based on economic incentives will empower the trust system within the network. The Inva token is going to be Investorland's native currency, and its floor price would be determined by the value of the tradable assets on the network with an ever-expending asset list and trillions of dollars of potential. This is already happening. Sosocios.com, the leading crowd investments company in Latin America, with more than half a million transactions already made, is developing this network and will be the first company to base itself on it, migrating its ongoing operations onto Investoland. Any company, software, or individual will be able to base its financial interactions on blockchain smart contracts through Investoland. The potential is endless. Anyone can be a part. You can be a part. Join the investments revolution. Um, just like the other uh, cases that we talk about, we yes. are uh, we have so many topics to cover on the webinars. Um, but we are going to be working throughout the year um, to cover all of this in depth. So Cesocio is another of, uh, of the companies we are talking with uh, so that we could do a webinar with them um, so that they could talk more in depth about their solution and get interaction with the community um, to, to discuss further, just like we're going to do with tax freight just like we did with Gasnor, and we're going to do with Banco Central tomorrow. Uh, the third case we have on the finance industry is uh, the Vivienda. We do not have a video for this. Um, the Vivienda is being developed by Coibanks, uh, just like uh, you have seen also that BitGive is, was developed by Coibanks. Um, it's a great partner of ours. And they've been doing a great job uh, in terms of developing solutions. We're going to talk also later about one case uh, that is very significant 
they put together for the government industry, um, the government sector, sorry. Uh, but now Maxi, really quick, is going to uh, go through, through this uh, and uh, explain you uh, briefly what is a vivienda solution about, uh, unless Leo is there and wants to do it himself. <laughs> Uh, yeah, the Vivienda uh, just uh, launched a, a, a mobile wallet, you know, and they tokenized a peso colombiano, just similar to stablecoin. So and they, they allow to their to their employees just to, to do micro payments uh, through their wallet, through their wallet, you know, just allowing uh, users just to pay the launch uh, with uh, digital uh, pesos and using the the, the Vivienda mobile wallet. Uh, the next phase uh, is just uh, focus on customer customers, uh, not only micro payments, but also uh, uh, micro micro credit. So I think that it's very interesting about how uh, a, a, a big organization uh, is doing baby steps on this technology and just uh doing doing it by stages you know and it's amazing just to see the evolution of the vivienda is the the i know the the number two or, or number three bank in colombia so it, it's amazing so yeah we have more news from them yeah uh one of the things i've been talking with um the koi banks team um is that we are gonna They've been starting to do, as I mentioned at some point, some webinars. They did recently one about the activity of Marcos Paz that I'm gonna mention shortly. Uh, but we are also gonna coordinate with them a web webinar, uh, COI banks with IOB Labs, so that we could get more in depth of uh, several of these cases that, that they've been uh, uh, developing with great success. Uh, in the case of government, um, we're going to talk uh, about three cases. Um, two of them uh, were recently announced, and so you probably see news about them. Uh, one is related, uh, and these three cases in the government are Argentina related. Uh, one is the Central Bank from Argentina. The other one is GasNet and GasNor, that is the, the gas uh, system. Um, and the third one is Activo of Marcos Paz. Um, so basically, Activo Marco Paz, as I will mention, it was developed by Coibanks. It's a, it's a great initiative. Um, it's a platform uh, in which neighbors and stores exchange products and services using digital assets. Uh, it's a mobile application that uh, Coibanks developed. It's built on top of RSK and enables citizens to get benefits, discounts, promotions, savings, Grades through their participations in programs. For example, recycling. Um, people that participate in recycling programs, they get rewards in this app that they could then exchange for services at the uh, stores that are associated to the program. So um, this case is doing two things, uh, and it's very important for the municipality of Markov Pass. Uh, because for one side, it's trying to reward citizens and encourage citizens' desired behavior, like, for example, getting on board with recycling programs. And on the other hand, uh, it's serving another purpose, that is to have an impact, a positive impact in the local economy um, by uh, generating um, um, you know, um, economy activity through the stores that participate of the program. Um, so it, it's like a virtuous circle, you know, the good behavior is rewarded with benefits that generate economic activity in the store of the municipality and everybody wins. And also, I'm not the expert on the case, but from what I've been reading, my understanding is also for the stores, the stores that participate in the program, they have tax savings uh, attached. So it's a very, very nice case, very interesting. Um, there was, as I was mentioning, a webinar that uh, Coivans put together uh, last week. I believe that one was in Spanish. Um, we will be talking with, um, well, we already had started talking with Coivans. 
so that we will do, as I mentioned, a webinar where we could talk about uh, several of their cases, um, use cases that they have built, uh, this win being one of them. But it's an interesting case uh, because it could be taken to you know any other community um, um, and it's already proved and it's already working. The central bank, Argentina central bank, um, uh, we are going to have, as I mentioned, and, and Fran, please, if you could share there in the chat um, the link uh, to tomorrow's webinar. Uh, you could also find it on our uh, webinar landing page. Um, we are going to have the, the dedicated session tomorrow to talk about this case, along with Grupo Sabra, which is the, the company that developed. This is a pilot. Um, that is being launched, and it's a very, very interesting case um, of um, you know uh, technology, blockchain technology in the in the financial uh, space. It's a complex solution. I'm just going to touch briefly in in some of the key points. I invite like the Spanish speakers um, that like to learn more about this to join us tomorrow. Uh, for the non-Spanish speaker, uh, I ask you to have a little patience. We will uh, work with Grupo Sabra to put, either put together the webinar in English uh, or subtitle the webinar that we're going to have tomorrow, but we're going to give you the opportunity to, to get to know much more about this solution. Um, the target audience is, is two, is the participant banks and the end user. Um, that you know are, are the consumers that um, the, that, that use the bank services, and the solution is to handle um, direct account debit claims made by customers, and it's a it's a very cumbersome uh, problem uh, because uh, there are many banks uh, involved participating, and basically what the pilot is trying to do is provide more efficient alternatives to the current clearing system amongst banks. Um, the problem that they are trying to solve is to make transactions uh, in a standardized, reliable, secure manner, uh, achieving end-to-end uh, -end traceability for managing each claim uh, while keeping track of the account, uh, account, bank, uh, sorry, bank account updates entering the system. So, um, Again, I invite you tomorrow uh, to learn more about this and stay tuned for the English version uh, to get in more depth into this case. The other one for government um, is uh, GasNet. We recently uh, issued a press release about GasNor. Uh, GasNet is a blockchain network. It's focused on, GasNet is a gas distributor in Argentina. And it has uh, several uh, participants. One of them is Gasnor. And what they put together is a blockchain network that allows the registration of all transactions uh, that are processed in the certification of new installation, reconnection of gas service between future or current customers. So every time you know a consumer wants to have gas service, uh, they have to go through one distributor if they want to cut the ca gas service because they're going to transition to another source of energy. They need to get in contact. Sometimes they get the service gas because they didn't pay. So basically, the solution is an a end-to-end solution to, uh, to, for the installation and the connection or reconnection or disconnection to the gas service. Uh, target audience, customers and gas distributors. And what is the problem GasNet is trying to solve? Is um, achieve greater traceability and security to complete the process uh, of new certifications. Also to measure the quality of the service providers uh, because there are thousands of them. Right now with the pilot we do did with GasNor, there's been uh, 10,000 uh, registered gasists that are participating in the pilot. Uh, through Reef name service technology, um, uh, but there are much more, um, you know, Gasnor has 2 million users, uh, and that's just one of the distributors 
of the gas industry in Argentina. Um, why this matters? Because historically, the, the process of setting up a new gas installation took a lot of paperwork, a lot of time uh, that was lost in the process, and it was highly inefficient and uh, very costly. And through blockchain technologies, Argentinian gas system is taking the lead to reduce its cost, to improve efficiency, and to provide greater customer service. Um, again, we did a webinar specific to this that is available uh, in Spanish in our uh, YouTube page, and soon will be available in English as well. And the last one uh, I have as part of the presentation, and then you know we open for uh, discussion, comments, there was a lot of materials, uh, so sorry uh, if we <laughs> uh, took a, uh, talk a lot, uh, but we wanted to, to cover uh, all this material we, we, we compiled and we put together to, to give you like a perspective of several examples in different uh, industries and institutions uh, of how blockchain uh, is being used across the world and also across uh, industries and organizations. Um, the last one um, we're going to talk at this session is Carnes Validadas. That is developed by, by uh, it's been developed by Coibans as well. Um, Leo, are you there? Leo from Coibans? No, I don't think so, Gloria. He's not here, I think. Okay. Okay. Well, we are gonna, as I mentioned before, we're gonna have a webinar with Coibans to talk uh, about all these interesting uh, use cases that they develop, and you have the opportunity when we do so to get more uh, details and be able to ask the questions that you may have about this specific case or any other developed by them. Uh, but it's an uh, animal uh, identification uh, platform uh, based on blockchain te technology to give transparency uh, and clarity to the meat production process. Uh, basically, it's a traceability um, that what it's wanting to do is to, to, do, to be able to track from the origin of the animal uh, to the end, to the point to where it gets to uh, the end user. Um, and what it's doing is, besides providing traceability, is provide a solution to transform the the end-to-end the -end and the, the supply chain process for the food industry, uh, in this case, uh, meat industry, uh, that it was based like in a lot of manual process uh, that were not uh, easily traceable, that were very inefficient and highly costed, um, uh, highly uh, costly. And the target audience is the consumers, but also is the meat producers and all the participants uh, in, the, in the supply chain of the meat industry. Um, the problem they are trying to solve is align the meat producers and their value chain with the consumer demands. Creating value will improve control over the supply chain and provide more clarity in food production. And why this matters? This matters to provide transparency, clarity, and confidence to the meat production process from the genealogy, how they call it, to the, to the end user. Uh, these were the, the cases we put together uh, for the webinar uh, that we had today. I wanted to point you to a few uh, resources in case you are interested to learn more about this. Um, first, we have a use case page. Um, there you have the URL, um, rsk.co. You could go to the footer use cases. Um, most of the cases we talked today are there. Some of them are new, and we're in the process of including them on the website, like the central bank and Gasnor, Gasnet. So probably will be up today, but the rest of them are there. And there are a few more uh, that we didn't touch base upon today because so in light of time, we couldn't talk about all of them. Um, the other great resource that I mentioned several locations during this talk is the, the, uh, the YouTube channel where we have the playlist 
Uh, we have them organized by segment. So we have developers playlist. We have now a use case playlist, uh, DeFi playlist. Um, so it's a great place for resources if you are interested to learn more. And uh, in the use cases, you have like all these videos, but also like the webinars we started doing to get more uh, uh, in depth about like the different solutions. And um, we also have a webinar page where we are uh, posting every week the new webinars that, you know, the schedule that we have for, for, for the week. And, you know, we're trying to do it for the following two weeks. And one important thing that I want to mention here is um, we heard your feedback. We're always trying to uh, get better at, uh, you know, interacting with the community and serving the community. And what we are uh, doing right now is we are revamping the developers, uh, the, the webinar section, because right now uh, we only have, uh, for past webinars, we only have the link to the YouTube channel. Um, and what we are working on is to start uploading uh, the past webinars were to include not only the link to the video in the YouTube for the webinar, but also the link to the presentation we share at the webinar and other resources um, uh, that might be of interest to the community. So please, um, you know, let's let's keep the let's keep the dialogue. Um, sorry, that's my kids' uh, homeschool that. Uh, they're driving me crazy these days, like all the parents uh, through this uh, uh, pandemic. Um, just wanted to show you um, what I'm talking about uh, on the RSK page. We have the webinars. Um, we are posting their, you know, the upcoming webinars. But we'll, and, and then we also have uh, the YouTube link. Uh, but what we are doing is we're working on past events um, and already have some of them that we uploaded so that, you know, you could, you could uh, have access to them whether you're going to a YouTube channel and look at the videos in the playlist we put together or you could like go through the past event and get uh, all the information uh, related to it, whether it's the recording, which is in YouTube, uh, whether it's um, the PowerPoint presentation or other resources uh, related. This is work in progress. We are uh, working so that the, the experience um, will be optimized because as we are doing many events, we don't want people to having to, to be scrolling down uh, like uh, continuously. Um, but uh, we're gonna have soon, uh, soon we're gonna have news um, you're gonna have, like uh, I was saying, not only the, the videos share and the recording, but also the PowerPoint presentation, uh, and other type of resources that, that might be of interest to the community. So um, I stopped sharing the, the screen. I know it was a lot of information um, that we share, and I hope uh, it's been valuable to you all. And, you know, we are, we have launched the webinars uh, uh, over a month ago. Uh, we had to quickly react to the new world reality and um, transition to online events. We are learning as we go. We are trying to get better at it. But what is very important um, is for us to keep the dialogue going and get your input, your ideas, your feedback, on how we can do it better, and also what are the topics that you would like us to cover. You know, we have different audiences. We have developers, we have entrepreneurs, uh, government, NGOs. Uh, there are a lot of different audiences uh, we are talking to, and we are always, uh, you know, all ears uh, wanted to hear from you um, to see how we could you know, together collectively uh, help uh, take uh, blockchain to mass adoption and to really have an impact in the world. Um, so I feel that I talk a lot. Uh, I don't know. 
I know that there's a lot uh, that is being uh, discussed. Um, I don't know if there's any uh, questions additional. I know that the chat is being really uh, going while I was going through the videos and the presentations, but um, I don't know, Fran, um, is there questions we open uh, or um, now? I know that we are, uh, we are past uh, 3 p.m. here, um, so it's been a long time, so I don't know if we have uh, room for some questions uh, or what do you suggest? Yes, I, I think we, we pretty much uh, answered every questions. We, with together with Maxi on, on, that were sent on our chat box. So, well, I, I would close right now. I don't know if anybody has a, a personal question. We already shared our emails and our social media accounts. Uh, so, well, thank you so much, everyone, to, to join us, for keeping up in touch with us. Um, and, well, uh, don't stop visiting our our uh, web pages and our meetup groups in order to to join for the next webinars. Fran, uh, one, one question before we leave, because um, I know we provided the YouTube link, the webinar landing page uh, to the community now, the use cases link, uh, but which one is the best email uh, for the community to send us suggestions on um, you know, how we could improve the webinars and topics that they would like uh, us to, to cover that we are not covering. I, I know this being an ongoing discussion in all the webinars, but could we set up like one specific email to write to a community so that they could, uh, um, you know, give their suggestions on topics, on improvements, on how we could do better and how we could cover the areas of interest. Yes, you can write us well directly to my to my email that it's I already shared it. It's Francisco at iovlabs.org or events at iov iovlabs.org or marketing at iovlabs.org. Any of them, well, they I, I will receive them. So don't don't stop attacking us uh, if you have any suggestions or if you have any also complaints or if it's not working well. Well, you can you can write us, but I, I think that well, we we tried a a little a lot of platforms actually to to deploy these these webinars, but I think that this one is working and it's pretty easy for everyone to communicate and to share their thoughts. Uh, so thank you so much. And we will be keeping you posted about all the <laughs> webinars I mentioned that we are putting together uh, related to use cases. Uh, we are doing a great job on uh, webinars for developers. Uh, we are also working very hard uh, now on use cases um, and some of the webinars we gave, and this one to give an overview, and there are much more coming. So stay tuned. Uh, we are gonna be sharing the news uh, and you're gonna see them in the calendar and we'll take into account all your feedback uh, for future webinars as well. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you for uh, listening. Thank you for being interested to participate. And uh, I hope to be in contact with, with all of you uh, soon. Okay, great. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye, everybody. Have a, a nice day.